In retrospect, this is all that damn book's fault. How many times must I go over this? My story isn't going to change. Yes, I know that a pony with my history is starting to raise suspicion when something like this occurs, but I but I tell you once again, I am innocent of these crimes you have charged me with. My hooves are clean. What occurred in that library was all the Princess Twilight's doing. You have to believe me. Fine. If we must go over it again, then we must. As I've already told you, I was with my mentor and teacher earlier today in the library of Canterlot Castle. Twilight had procured for me a special pass to read it from the forbidden section, a selection of tomes that hold magic too dark and powerful for all but the most magically inclined of unicorns. When I pressed Twilight for exactly why she had chosen this as her next friendship lesson, her response only caused me more confusion. Because you might be the one who can actually help me do it. The intense look in my teacher's eyes halted my f any further questioning on my part for the time being. We pored over the arcane text in the forbidden section. For what felt like hours, I read about spells and possibilities that I'd only dreamed of. Did you know there were there's a hex that can return youth to the elderly? Another book is just one long mathematical equation that allows me to create life from the lifeless. I recall one book in particular that held sketches that seemed to depict beings whose image made my head hurt if I tried to comprehend them for too long. Twilight frustration's groan made me look up sharply from my current reading. The Alicorn Princess was making her way towards the huge main shelf, tossing book every which way, barely looking at the covers. She was visibly frustrated, more so than I'd ever seen her before. She was doggedly in pursuit of some goal that escaped me for the time being. I'd closed the book of sketches, reached for the next one in the pile. Every now and then, I recalled the title was Crystal Clarity, De Vermis Mysterious. I read the title aloud, and Twilight was by my side in an instant, babbling excitably about what I found. It became rather obvious that the old book was the one she had been searching for. Her magic snatched it from my grasp. And she began talking rapidly about the history of the book, about some pony named Ludwig Prenz and his foray into the darker side of magic. The way she told it, She'd been a filly the first time she snuck into the Forbidden Section. She found De Vernmus Mysterious and had burned an entire night lost in its pages. It was within that she had discovered an idea that had set a blaze inferno into her brain. One that had not been tempted in all the years passing. The 13th hour. I remember the almost panic glint in her eyes. When she passed the book back to me, now opened on the source of her obsession, the 13th hour, as Prance Ward wrote, was a concept he stumbled upon while researching that method to get more time to study during the day. His writing referenced to an hour hidden within the strokes of midnight, and one a secret sort of pocket dimension that only cert a certain few were able to perceive. One physical being was left behind, but one's mind became privy to the whole new layers of existence. In the realm of the 13th hour, 
time itself ceased to be. Using this newfound access to this hidden world, Prance was able to advance his mastery of the magical arts by leaps and bounds. I remember the bitter smile on Twilight's face as she, her voice was concluded that France could possibly have exceeded Starswirl himself. Had a mob of villagers convinced Prance was a necromancer, not burst into his home, dragging him out and burnt him at stake. Twilight's intensity began to frighten me. I think she could sense it, and she tried to calm me down. She told me that she had known how to access the hour for years. It was only fear of the unknown that had held her back. Suddenly, Twilight's reasons for bringing me here along became clear. She wanted to cast a spell on her that would allow her to speak to me while her essence accessed the 13th hour. That way, I could record her findings and, it, if necessary, help her if she was unable to pull herself back. I... I wanted to refuse her, but I found my tongue would not voice my fears. I owed everything to Twilight. Who was I to deny, to deny her request? Who was I? When this was something that had consumed me, her for years, I agreed. Celestia, forgive me, I agreed. She settled herself into one of the plain wooden chairs and lit several candles so that I would be able to see what I was writing. The sun had long since sunk, and the forbidden section was now dark, cold, foreboding, as any dungeon must be. The candles created the candles created dancing shadows on the walls. Momentarily, faces in the darkness that seemed to leer at us and urge us on. At Twilight's guidance, I carefully cast the consciousness spell on her. She shivered as the spell settled over her like a shroud and offered me a reassuring smile. I did my best to return it, but I imagined it must have looked more like a grimace. I watched as she examined the page of the book and lit her own horn. I watched as her familiar purple magic flowed from her horn and coated her entire body. The violet aura began to dim, and I saw far away, look in her eyes, they glazed over, like she was falling into a deep sleep, still they remained wide open, how I wish now that they had simply closed, she began talking then, what did I, what, did I take notes, of course I did, no, I don't have them, where, where would I keep them? You found me in the forbidden section and dragged me straight here, didn't you? Did I have time to stash them in somewhere? While I laid on the floor, sobbing and screaming? At what I had wit just witnessed? Do you think I have the book as well? Go! Go back to the library and check the shelves. I bet you you'll find it still there, untouched smoothly clean, not touched by either dust or by suit. Yes, yes, I remember what she said. Do you really want to know? Maybe if I tell you, you'll understand. You'll finally listen to me and release me so I can stop that wretched damn thing from hurting any pony else ever again. You want to know? Fine, I will satisfy your curiosity. She smiled at first. 
I'll never forget the content smile as I as long as I live. Oh, oh starlight. She whispered. Her voice was tingled with something I could call a rapturous joy. It's everything I ever dreamed. She described with increased excitement how the world around her looked just like her own but frozen in time. She narrated to me her long trek through the castle while I did my best to keep up with the notes. She described the staleness in the air like a museum that had not seen a visitor in quite some time. She traversed the castle and then the courtyard noticed noticing minutes different between our world and the world of the 13th hour. She she wanted to see more, she told me. She flapped her wings and took flight. I saw her physical wings twitch every, ever so slightly and I felt that smallest twinge of indefinable fear. I continued to write as she described the barren plain surrounding the castle. Her voice took on a darker tone then. How I wish I had pulled her out at that moment. What? What's that? You found one of my notes? Of course you did. You were supposed to. Where was it? On the floor? By the ashes? Tell me. Tell me something, sir. Was it there before? You... You want me to read it? Very well. Ahem. Something's not right here, Starlight. There's some strange force. I can't place it, but it feels like it's pulling me. Guiding me like a whisper in my ear. It's calling me. North. Yes, North. Towards the mountain beyond the Crystal Empire. There's something there I need to find. What is it? She was quiet for a while after that. No, I'm not sure how long. It may have been minutes. It felt like hours. Eventually, she spoke again. The fear a bit more prevalent in her voice. Starlight, I just flew over the Crystal Empire. It's, it's not there. But it is. I'm not sure how to describe it. Everything looks like it's in the proper place, but when I get closer, it just fades into a colorful mist. There's more. The ground is slightly inclining towards the Empire's borders. Like it's rising. I need... I need to get closer. She was quiet again, but only for a few seconds. Her glazed eyes widened, and she fluttered an involuntary shriek. At the vision she was, she saw now. I don't believe it. Starlight, it's a mountain range. But there shouldn't be any mountains here. They're, they're huge. The biggest mountains I've ever seen. I can't even see the top. But they, they just keep going and going higher than the clouds. Wait, there's a passing a lot ahead. Starlight, whatever's calling me is past these mountains. I have to go further. I begged her to come back, to let me bring her back. She didn't even acknowledge me. Her wings were fully flapping, purple feathers flying every which way, falling like downing snow. The flames atop the candles were as though growing more and more excited as Twilight grew closer and closer to whatever dark discovery laid ahead of her. It's... I'm passing the mountains now. Starlight. I can't even describe it. It's like a valley. No, a plateau. And it's going on as far as my eyes can see. The air smells different. Not stale like before. It smells like home. Like, like it's, it's... She screamed then. Oh, how she screamed. How I, I had to put my hooves over my ears to block her hideous noise. I, and still, I could hear her piercing wails. 
Her glazed eyes were now rolled in the back of her head. Her wings branched out at, to the point of breaking, her legs kicking on the, as she tried to scamper away from whatever was threatening her, or like they were trying to fight something off. What? Finish the note? Fine. Damn you! He's here, Starlight. He's here with them. They've been here for eons, plotting, ske and planning and scheming. Do you understand? They've been had nothing but time. Because time does not exist here. The color out of space, the goat of a thousand young. She spoke more in that hideous burbling language, but I couldn't follow. Finally, she stopped and began to sob. I was wrong, Starlight. All these years, and I was wrong. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I won't see you again. They've, they're all around me now. These hellish legions and something else. No, you stay away from me. Get away! Get away! Get away! She spasmed for a moment, like electricity currents was going through her. And then she was still. She slumped over the in the chair, her falling wings knocking against one of the candles, and it fell into the floor. The old chair she sat in went up quickly, and my mentor, my friend, was soon lost in the flames. Had hungered, consumed flesh and wood alike. I wish I could say I tried to save her, but I, I was already where you found me, curled on the floor, nearly out of my mind. I did not kill Twilight Sparkles, but I may as well have. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They're gone now, the guards. I mean, I know you're still here. They're... Though... I know you're still here, though. I can feel you watching me in the darkness. You know I left something out, don't you? I had to. If I told them, they'd call me mad and lock me away before I can finish what must be done. I have to go back to the library. I have to find that cursed book and find a way to finish what the flames could not. Why? You don't understand. Those mountains, Twilight saw, and the hideous things that lurk behind them, they are moving slowly, so slow, very slowly, but they are still moving. The incline to the boundaries of Crystal Empire was a giveaway, in the, and in time, though it may be countless millenniums from now, they will pass the thresholds of the 13th hour. And find their way into our world and on that terrible day when at last the stars are right and those unknowable things will come and all will be lost doomed to, will come to equestria what's that how do i know this how do i know that things on the side can cross over into our world do you really think a single candle flame could burn strong enough to reduce the chair to ashes, let alone an alicorn. When twilight collapsed, I reached out a hoof for her. I called her name over and over again. Twilight, I cried. Twilight! Twilight! Her head lulled horribly. Went then, and her eyes found mine. But they were no longer hers. They blazed with hate, wicked intelligence, and a malvolent of w wisdom of the ages. The mouth that was no longer my friend's fell open and hung limply before the jaws was again retracted. I could see the tongue swirling inside her mouth. It twirled in rapid circles, like it was trying to remember its purpose. 
it spoke to me. That saying. That saying in Twilight's body. A single sentence in a cracked, ageless voice. The saying's breath was rank and cold. Like the air in a long, sealed mellishness. It smiled. Then, and I saw the legs. That had... That had... That had last been used fruitlessly to ward off the evil from the nether world, beginning to work back and forth like the mouth of the thing, and I acted without thinking. My magic grabbed every candle in that room and increased their blaze a hundredfold. I focused the infernal on the thing in the chair, and it screamed as it burned. It screamed and flailed and glared at me with murderous wanted hate. It glared at me until the eyes were nothing but ashes and soot. They can't ever know that though. They would never believe me. They could not handle the words of the saying as it rapidly relearned how to use mortal words. They could never imagine the idea of one who had escaped into his greatest discovery when his mortal form was taken and burned generations ago. Finding a window back into the world that he so hated and despised. They will never hear the words. I heard the saying speak then. The voice not of the princess of friendship, but the molded and crusted tone of a sorcerer only known as Ludwig Pranze. The words that will haunt my sleep until my dying days. You fool. Twilight Sparkle is dead.